We would like to give a happy birthday shout out to Ocean Mosley and Ethan Criswell. Hey everybody, sign up for Bowling in the Office. Let's get another state championship. Go get your Made Strong t-shirts. All of the proceeds will go to the Multiple Sclerosis Foundation in honor of Coach Hill. And don't forget to get your NAA t-shirt. They're $12 and $15 in day October 6th. A small town known as Crosby on the Mississippi State Louisiana border has 325 residents. 200 of these residents are now homeless because of the flooding in Louisiana. They're too small to qualify for FEMA insurance, so the Rotary Club will be taking out money at lunch. They need your help. Please donate. The framers of the Constitution knew it wasn't a perfect document. However, as Benjamin Franklin said on the closing day of the convention in 1787, I agree to this Constitution with all its faults, if they are such. I doubt to whether any other convention we can obtain may be able to make a better Constitution. Be ready. Today, the original Constitution is on display at the National Archive in Washington, D.C. Did you know the word democracy does not appear in the Constitution? And did you know under special circumstances a president could be in office for 10 years? Go ahead. Look and see for yourself. Know your constitution. Hey, I'm Caitlin Cavender and I'm, I signed with Blue Mountain to play softball. And I've been playing softball with the Lady Dogs for six years now. And I want to give a shout out to Tom Seller for being the best coach out there. My name is Kayla Pavlik and I graduated from New Albany in 2013. I am currently at Millsaps College, I'm going to be graduating here in December, and I study spiders and scorpions, and I have a scorpion right here. Um, it's a Hadrurus spadix, one of the largest scorpions in the United States, um, and uh, one of the most docile scorpions you can probably ever have. Um, scorpions are really fascinating creatures. Um, they do this really cool thing under black light. This scorpion, uh, as you can see, fluoresces under black light. And as a matter of fact, all scorpions do. And nobody knows why. Um, there have been studies and experiments to try and figure out why, and it's hypothesized that they use their entire body as one big photoreceptor, as one big light detector, one big eye. But nobody can really pinpoint why a nocturnal animal would need to be this vibrant of a color under specific light. So this is Sally. Um, she is a Mexican red, tea, red knee tarantula, excuse me, um, Brachypilma smithi. And um, she is actually from Mexico. We went and um, collected her. Um, she is uh, another really good pet to have. Um, probably sounding crazy but um, tarantulas and scorpions don't have to eat every day and they don't have to drink every day. Um, I feed my collection about once every two weeks um, and that's to keep them really really fat. So I went to Millsaps originally on a pre-med track. Um, I thought I was gonna go to med school and be some sort of doctor surgeon and what have you and um, by chance uh, a class that I needed as a pre-med requisite was full so I had to fill my hours to stay as a full-time student um, by taking some other science class so I ended up taking a bioterrestrial arthropods class which is just fancy term for saying our, uh, bugs on land um, and that was my sophomore year of college and ever since then I completely fell in love with it I wanted to know everything I could about these guys they're so incredibly diverse and um, have the ability to adapt into almost any type of environment and they've been surviving for so long, they're extremely successful. So, so once I get my PhD, um, I want to work for the DOD and Homeland Security, um, specializing in exploitation of arthropod neurobiology to be able to train them to have an affinity for a specific chemical, um, and those chemicals will be chemicals found in explosive materials and essentially make bomb-sniffing insects, spiders, and scorpions. 
they've already done some bomb sniffing insect work with honeybees, but the problem with honeybees is that they're going extinct with um, pesticides and the, the, their resources being exploited by humans and um, also a syndrome known as collapsing colony disorder where a, a colony of bees will um, establish itself and then won't last for more than maybe a month or two and they all just die, they can't function. And so when all the honeybees are gone, um, A, it's going to be a huge, huge problem for plants that need bees to pollinate them. Um, B, things that eat bees, um, bees are, actually do have predators um, and things that feed off of them. C, where are we going to get our honey? Um, everybody likes honey and if the honeybees are gone, we can't have honey. And uh, D, if the honeybees are gone, what are we going to use to sniff out bones? <laughs>